Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello and how are you doing? I'm very pleased because all sorts of great things have been happening. First, we've had one million downloads which means a very large number of people around the world, including you, are enjoying listening to and learning to tell stories. Hurrah! And we've got a new theme, which is quest stories. Do you know what a quest is? A quest story involves someone going on a journey to find or achieve something. For example, in last week's tale, The Bear Who Stole the Wind, a young boy had to go on a dangerous journey to find the bear who'd stolen the warm wind. The story we're going to hear today is The Peddler of Swatham, which is about a man who dreams of finding gold and heads out to seek his fortune and find the treasure of his dreams. If you were to go on a quest or a long journey, what would you like to find? A wishing ring? A dragon? A unicorn? A treasure chest? I don't know. Have a think while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. It's me again. Are you ready for this story? The Peddler of Swatham. Do you think the man in this tale is going to find what he's looking for? Have a listen to Kate Corkery telling this old English tale and you'll see. Are you ready? Mouth open. Story jump out. London is a wonderful big city. Lots and lots of people live here and lots of people come from all over the world to find their fortune in London. The story I'm going to tell today is a folk tale, an English folk tale. Once upon a time, there was a man called John, John Chapman, and John lived in a little cottage. He had a small garden with one apple tree, a sort of crooked apple tree growing in his garden. He had a rickety fence. He didn't have much money. He tried to earn money by being a peddler. And a peddler is somebody who goes around with a basket of things. Maybe they're buttons and bows or pins and needles, little things that people might want. And they sell things. Because long ago, you know, people often didn't even get to the shops. And it was nice if somebody came around to where you lived and had things to sell. But as times were very hard, John was noticing not many people were buying things from him and therefore he wasn't making any money. And because he wasn't making any money, he didn't have much to eat. Well, he did have a few apples from the apple tree, but that wasn't enough. One night he went to bed and he had a dream. And in the dream, a voice said to him, Go to London Bridge and you will find your fortune. London Bridge, said John. I've heard of London. I've never been to that big city. I've heard of people going there and finding their fortunes, but my goodness, I never thought that it would be for me. No, it's not for the likes of me, he said. So he forgot his dream. Until the next night, when he had the very same dream. And the voice said the very same thing. Go to London Bridge and you will find your fortune. Oh, well, he woke up the next day with a smile on his face, but again he thought, well, it's a very vivid dream, but it was just a dream. But when he had the dream for the third time, on the third night running, he thought, this dream keeps telling me to go to London, where I will find my fortune. <laughs> well, I'm not finding any fortune here, so maybe I should, I should do what the dream is telling me. So he put his sack on his back, and he took his little dog with him, 
and he went out of his little house and he closed his rickety gate and he walked along the dusty path all the way to London. You know, he, he was so poor, he didn't have a horse or cart. It was before there were motor cars, but even if there had been motor cars, he wouldn't have afforded one. So he just walked. You know, a peddler is somebody who walks around on their feet and they sell things. And he thought, well, I'll, I'll walk and I'll walk and I'll walk until I get to London and I will look for this London bridge that I've been told of. And after some days, he did arrive in the bustling city of London. Oh my goodness, he'd never seen so many people. He'd never heard so much noise. There were people calling out. There were other hawkers and traders and sellers calling out their wares. And he couldn't believe that this place, this teeming place, would have anything for him. But he walked and he walked until he came to the River Thames, the big River Thames. And he looked and he saw that bridge. London Bridge, stretching from one side of the river to the other. Oh, my goodness, he'd never seen a bridge so big. And he had never seen a bridge with houses on it and shops on it and a bridge where people were going over and back, selling things, calling out. This is it. This is the place of my dream, said John. So he walked along from one side of London Bridge to the other. Get your ripe apples, strawberries, buy your flowers. Get some lovely pies, mutton pies here. People were calling out all sorts of things they were selling. John didn't quite know what he was looking for, but he was looking and he was listening for everything around him. Then he, when he got to the other side of the bridge, he turned and he came back the other way, looking and listening. Get your ripe apples, strawberries, buy your flowers. Get some lovely pies, mutton pies here wondering how he would find his fortune in this place. And eventually, he decided he would just stand there and, and wait and see what would happen. And his little dog just curled up at his feet and John stood there. He stood there all day. <laughs> and then he stood there all night. And all the next day and the next night and the third day. And on the third day, a shopkeeper came out of his shop and he said, listen, listen, mate, I've, I've been watching you. What, are you. what are you doing here? You're not selling anything. You're not buying anything. You're not begging. Why are you standing there day after day on the bridge? Oh, said John, well, um, you probably find this a little bit silly, but I, I, was, I was told in a, in a dream to come to London Bridge where I would find my fortune. <laughs> <The man laughed. laughs> you came here because you had a dream <laughs> and you believed your dream and you came all the way from your countryside Norfolk long way away all the way here oh he said listen I had a dream let me tell you I had a dream the other night I dreamt that I should go to a place called Swaffham. I, I don't even know if a place called Swaffham exists. And that there, in the garden, a tiny garden next to, a, you know, a, a little house, with a, a rickety gate in the garden, next to a, um, an apple tree, that if I dug deep enough, I would find my fortune. <laughs> I dreamt that. <laughs> Do you think that I'm going to leave here and go to a place that probably doesn't even exist because of a dream? No. <laughs> silly. That's silly. Listen, mate, I think you'd best just go home. And John listened. And he couldn't believe what he was hearing. Yes, he said, I, I think I will go home. Well, John Chapman, he turned from London Bridge with his little dog, and he walked and he walked and he walked all the way back to Swatham, to his village. And when he went in the rickety gate of his garden and he looked at his crooked apple tree, he immediately, he got a shovel and he started to dig and dig and dig and dig. And there under his very own apple tree, he found a pot of gold. Can you believe it? He found his fortune. He did not find his fortune in London Bridge, but it was on London Bridge that he was told where he would find his fortune, which was back at home in his own garden. 
and John Chapman was so delighted that for the rest of his life he'd have enough money and enough food. He was thrilled and grateful that his dream had come true. But he was not a greedy man. He didn't want to keep all that gold and treasure for himself. He could see around him many people in the village were very poor. He could also see that the church where people went to pray was in very bad repair. The roof was broken in, the walls were falling down. And John decided he would use his money to rebuild that church. People were so grateful that when the church was rebuilt, they had a statue made of him and his little dog. And that statue to John Chapman, the peddler of Swaffham, is still there to this day. And if you go to lovely Norfolk, and if you go to Swaffham, you will see it. And it's to show people that kindness is always remembered. And also, it's to remind people of that story. And to maybe help people remember that, you know, dreams sometimes do come true. Thanks to Kate for that. I now want to go to Norfolk to find that statue of John Chapman and his little dog. Now, here's an amazing fact. Just recently, some treasure hunters found a hoard of Anglo-Saxon gold coins in a farmer's field in Norfolk. That's the very same part of Britain where the peddler of Swaffham found his gold. What an amazing world. And now it's time for me to dip into my bag of happies and thank you for all the beautiful pictures and comments and support that you're so kindly sending us. Thanks to Finn in Maine for your delightful picture of Pip and the Moon Rabbit. Pip has the biggest smile. I love it. And Sila in Vancouver, who is five, sent an energetic picture of Buki dancing the Kokioko. And how the mosquito became is Liam's favourite story. Liam, who is six, got in touch to say that he is like the two brave sisters and isn't afraid of anything. Go, Liam, go. Thanks to Skylar, who is five, from Pennsylvania, who sent not one, but two lovely pictures of her favourite stories, the magic orange tree and the three dolls. Your picture of the three dolls is so stylish and I love the colours that you've used. And four and a half year old Maya has sent in a wonderful picture of the magic orange tree. She's included herself and her mum and the storyteller in the picture. Good idea, Maya. We're all part of the story when it's being told. Now, here's some good news. After our trial run, we've discovered that quite a few of you still want to get Super Great Kids t-shirts. So, Super Great David has now set up a permanent shop so that you can order t-shirts in an even wider range of colours and sizes. If you're interested in a Super Great Kids Stories t-shirt, then go to our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. And a very big thank you to all our sponsors and subscribers. We couldn't make this without your support. If you'd like to subscribe to our podcast on Apple or Patreon and get bonus stories and access to super great treats, go to our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. And if you'd like to pay a one-off amount and buy us a coffee or a hot chocolate on Ko-fi, we'd also be thrilled. Thanks to Alexis, Jason and Harvey for supporting us on Ko-fi. And thanks to Nora and Zoe in Canada who gave us simply lovely reviews on Apple Podcasts. And thanks to all parents who are contacting us via our website and by Facebook Messenger. That's it for this week. Keep telling those stories to anyone who will listen. Even your dog and your stuffed animals will feel better after a bit of story medicine. <laughs>